Hey guys, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we are going to be showing you and discussing how to play a 78 RPM record properly. Now, as you know, I'm a proponent for playing 78s uh, with a micro groove stylus, if that's what you have on the suitcase players. I really don't think it's gonna do any damage to the cartridge or, or the stylus or the uh, record itself. After all, shellac records were designed to withstand sometimes ounces worth of downforce from what I've read, uh, let alone, you know, grams. And uh, Crosley's gonna put about, I say Crosley, a suitcase player's gonna put about five, six grams down. So I really don't see a diamond having that much trouble. Now it may wear down faster, but it's not gonna really damage it. Anyway, back to the topic at hand, how to properly play a 78. So we're gonna be using a wide groove stylus. So a micro groove modern LP record has a narrower uh, groove width than an old shellac 78 like this, which has like a three mil groove, a wider groove. So you have to technically use a wider groove stylus and cartridge combination like we have here to get the most out of that sound. Otherwise, the finer point micro groove stylus is gonna ride down the middle. It's not gonna get information off the sidewalls. It's gonna pick up a lot of noise. And uh, even if it's not damaging anything, it's just not gonna sound as ideal. Whereas this is gonna fit the groove snugly and it's gonna sound better. You'll be surprised how much bass we really get out of this thing. Okay, so we're gonna be listening on the Audio-Technica LP120X USB. We are quartz locked at uh, 78 RPM. And uh, for those of you purists, yes, this record was recorded at 78. Some of these old records are actually 80 RPM or whatnot, but we're quartz locked at 78 RPM. I have deep cleaned and demagnetized the record, and we are gonna be using a Crosley carbon fiber platter mat, Crosley S100 speakers. We are tracking at two grams, which is exactly what Ortofon recommends for this cartridge. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what kind of sound and especially bass response we can get out of a 78 RPM record. This one is Glenn Miller and his orchestra playing Sweet Eloise. So without further ado, let's give it a listen.
is all mine. So don't you give her a line, cause Eloise is all mine. Okay, guys, not bad for an 80-year-old recording, I would say, and an 80-year-old disc, although I believe this is actually a mid-40s reissue. Anyway, so this particular recording actually is known to have some of that kind of scratchy distortion near the end there. So some of the scratchiness is going to be some surface noise, which is inherent in any, especially older records. Um, you can get, you know, super good condition, 78s playing them back under these circumstances and render incredible sound quality. Even still, I was, you know, it's very full recording, a lot of bass. You saw me kind of trimming the treble on the bass actually down a little bit because uh, it was vibrating and causing some uh, bass feedback, some bass reflex feedback. This is not ideal. You don't want to put your speakers on the same surface as your record player and not this close, but it's what I've got set up right now. So, uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is the proper way to play a 78 RPM record. Now, if you have a 78 uh, record that was recorded after about 1925, it's gonna be electrically recorded. So it's inherently louder than older acoustic recordings, and therefore you wanna play those back on a modern record player. I did this the other day where we played a, a, modern, a more modern recording. It was a 50, 1956 recording on the old uh, Vita Nola phonograph. That's not ideal because electrically recorded records, those recorded after 1925 or so, have a tendency to be louder and therefore they're harder on those mica diaphragms of those pickups. So it's not ideal to do that. You can blow them out and it's harder on the gaskets. The proper way to play a 78 that's electrically recorded is going to be either on an orthophonic uh, turntable phonograph, which is something we haven't even covered yet, um, or on a modern day record player using a method like this with a wide stylus in order to get all that information, all that sound out of the grooves. If you have an acoustic phonograph record, you can do it either way. You can play it on an acoustic phonograph or an orthophonic phonograph, or you can play it on a modern day record player as well. No damage will be done. But anyway, you go, if, yeah, anyway, you guys, I hope you thought that was interesting. I love 78s and I love Glenn Miller and I love, you know, all the tools and, you know, we just heard audible sound, an actual recording from grooves cut into or pressed into a piece of shellac, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. This is an inanimate object, you guys. Well, it's animate when we move it, but by itself, it's an inanimate object with, you know, modulation in these grooves. And by the way, to the eye, this record looks like it's in pretty good condition. It's still got that kind of rainbow sheen that I talk about from time to time. But see that modulation, those little wiggles? That is the sound recorded in physical form and then using the tools, the record player, the stylus, the amplification, yada, yada, yada. We're able to bring sound. It's like a time machine. That's why I love this hobby so much, you guys. I think it's fascinating. I hope you did too. But most of all, I want to thank you guys for being there. Three shows today. I think that's a record for us. Again, I'm in this kind of uh, spring blitz challenge right now. So we're doing two more shows tomorrow at least. And we'll go from there. Hopefully something you find interesting. Share this out. Tell your friends. Most of all, thank you for being there, guys. Happy record hunting and listening. We'll catch you next time.